So discussing immediate pro loading protocol does not make currently any sense. So we are going to uh, see the retrofit. So uh, uh, my chart, other than the aspects of occlusion, other than the aspects of uh, the medical health, other than the aspects of the diet of the patient, the size of the patient, the muscles of the patient, this is a very simple representation from good bone to no bone. I would treat a good patient with maximum number of implants, 6, 8, depending on each one's protocol, parallel ones. In slightly uh, lesser uh, uh, bone and lesser occlusal requirements with no distal extension, opposing teeth not natural, so they are again opposing arch is restored, then probably all on four is a good option. If it is more atrophic, then I would go for zygomatic implants in the maxilla and all on four in the lower. If I need to be like the anterior implants are only one possible or really weak or uh, so then I would go for pterygoid implant or opposing dentition is natural. Then I will have to go for uh, pterygoid implants. If absolutely atrophic, then or uh, post onco resection, post mucor resection, then I would go for a quad zygoma. And uh, if nothing works, then finally uh, subperiosteal or uh, patient specific implants. So this is my uh, tree of how I would uh, decide <coughs> on to which uh, treatment I would do. Coming to the quad zygoma case, this is like we discussed, we need a physical uh, denture with uh, Bone screws. I put three bone screws only for one reason because uh, this is the area where we would put the remaining two bone screws when we put five or more and these areas are where I have to raise the flap. So what I trace it and remove them and with time I realized having them or not having them did not make a difference in my final case so now I don't put them. But for sure, 5 is better than 3, 6 is better than 5, non debatable Then I would uh, put radiopic markers, uh, I, this is just composite, a better shaped radiopic markers would be always better than this, but here I am using it for reference for my apartment planning and not for actual uh, lab fabrication of crossroads. So, but yes, a more accurate radiopic marker, better the overlap. Then I always scan the denture, like I said, top and bottom to create an STL for which I would do the overlap. Uh, this is how I do the overlap. It's a simple, uh, straightforward technique. We use minimum three points, if four, five, better. Then I would check it along the path to make sure that my uh, overlap is Correct. So and you check the roof, the roof too. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then I would uh, go for the abutment planning. So abutment planning, what I do is finally it's an eyeball technique. I would use 4552 because I use that company implant which provides 4552 abutments and make sure uh, that uh, they are <coughs> sort of. <coughs> parallel both along the uh, tooth surface over here, like on this view, as well as in the 3D view. So that I know my exit points on the prosthesis and also on the ridge. So this is how I do my abutment planning. And then I will check it with my STL just to make sure that I know what uh, position my 
Screws channel is going to be like a debate. I use uh, head tracker when I am sure that the patient is compliant, and now my staff is trained not to touch it. Initially, they would punch it. I would repeat it, but with bone screws, registration is 30 seconds. So. Even if it moves, I do not waste time to retrace. But if bone tag has been placed, it's you don't have to see it for six hours, ten hours, no problem. So I would say still gold standard is uh, how many choices? Uh, bone choice, uh, a bone anchorage is my your, your first, choice. first choice, but head tractor can 100% be used. So each one, each choice. Excuse me, yes. just a question. I think th this is an important uh, point that we have to, to say. Th this part here, because if you have a tension of the lip, it no. can bend this. No, so, 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 so this is a better way of doing it. Yes. I make it into a S shape. Yes, yes, yes. So but to, it's something that uh, you have to be careful of. Yes, the lip has to be passive. Otherwise, yes. the lip will have a mark at the end the, of the we are, I use Optragate yes. thing that can uh, lift the lip, the yes. lift in order yes. not to touch it. Uh, I agree with you, but a little more finicky for sterilization. So, I don't use Optragate all the time. Okay. Uh, then use the screw to trace and do accuracy check every drill because longer the drill for a uh, zygoma more chances of uh, variation in accuracy more chances of uh, and less error like if I move and I don't have much bone so my uh, complication percentage or the amount of complication with the 2 mm variation is higher in a zygoma than in a uh, probably a conventional implant. So every step mandatory to do the accuracy check. Uh, I have now minimized my flaps to a point I have done flapless zygomas but in my opinion it's not required to do flapless because raising a small flap gives similar post-operative discomfort to the patient and more control during surgery then a flapless. So this is the minimal flap I have raised. Uh, a flap similar to a direct sinus lift. So only instead of ending it at 4, I end it at 3. So I come a little more anterior. Uh, again, every drill is calibrated. Now for, uh, I'll show you the next Dr. George where I mean. So first thing I do is I calibrate the point drill or the lance drill or you can call it the precision drill whichever system you use and then this is the implant position or the plan implant I am planning I am not going parallel to my implant direction I am just deciding the point along the length of my implant so if this is one point, second point and third point. So this is how I would mark the point so that I don't get lost as to where my axis is going to be. Because now if I have three points here, one, two and three, when I put my next drill, I will put it along those three lines so I know which position I am and I just have to correct from buccal to palatal. My mesiodistal angle is already been decided by these three points. Only buccolingual direction is what I will be uh, have to judge when I'm drilling. So then I would use uh, the round burr and the uh, lateral cutting diamond points to create these grooves. I have not started drilling. I always create a groove slightly wider and more palatal because it gives me the freedom to adjust my angle. 
So if we do not remove adequate bone at this level of the crest, invariably you will not be able to tilt your implants towards the buccal and you will go more towards the orbit. So we have to reduce more on the uh, parallel side so that I can shift my work and come out in the zygoma and not towards the orbit. orbit. Then I would be uh, drilling 4 to 5 seconds at a time. The problem with long drills <laughs> is irrigation. So if I drill continuously, eventually there would be some necrosis at the apex. The uh, most uh, dense radio opaque uh, uh, or the most corticated bone would is the farthest. And if I am drilling continuously for 30 seconds, I am generating heat. So I would go 4 seconds, 4 seconds, 4 seconds, 4 seconds, 4 seconds till I reach the uh, desired length. So this is a video of I drilling. So this part is the easy part, soft bone. Once I enter here is where I feel the resistance. So that's when, if you all notice, I'm not drilling full. I'm just sort of going. So a piezo would be again a better option for coolant as well as uh, less trauma. So finally, this is the amount of time you need to place a zygote. By clock, 5 minutes. Because you just have to drill once, if too much dense bone, twice. That's it. This is the normal target, huh? Yes, this is 3 mm. The 3 mm. And the points are in these yellow ones that show up. This? No, 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 no. On the panorama? No. No, no, no. That's his concern. That's my planning. planning. Ah, those, are the my, those, those are the points. Okay. Uh, then I also calibrate my zygoma and place the zygoma under navigation for one reason is if I am doing a flapless zygoma, I drill it once but I can't find when I try to place the zygoma. So if I don't have navigation, I am searching for my point in the, inside the sinus. So if with this it becomes pretty much easy. So these are the uh, <coughs> zygomas placed. This is both the sides. This is uh, sutured. This is the uh, evaluator done. And uh, yes, so now is the immediate loading protocol, but I'll just skip through this. Just finish the case, take final processes and this is the next case with uh, pterygoid. Uh, so uh, two zygoma, two pterygoid and three conventional implants. Uh, zygoma steps remain the same. Only thing is planning for pterygoid which again is uh, just a routine planning. And this is the video for only the placement of uh, pterygoids and not for zygoma. The, in my personal opinion, pterygoid is more tricky than zygoma mm -hmm. because zygoma, you are seeing everything. There's, with navigation, you won't go in the orbit. So, no, no stress. But pterygoid, you miss it, you don't get your top. Zygoma, you will get top most of the time. So, if you are putting pterygoids, then you are able to do zygoma. <laughs> Absolutely no problem. So, it's the same concept. This is a case where good teeth were present. I have used teeth rather than uh, bone screws to trace and uh, Then yes, plan and uh, place the pterygoids, routine, post of radiograph. And this is a case of 
just two zygomas and two regular. The protocol remains the same since so I placed three screws only, though we decided five, because these two screws I always have to remove. So I don't place them anymore. Uh, regular two anteriors, two zygomas, same steps. And which number do you get in the planning? Two. Two. Not one, two. One, two. No, with zygoma to get one, you have to put one on the uh, buttress, which it doesn't make sense. So two. Yes. This is just one video. If you all see, this is what how I do zygomatic implants. Patient walks in at 1:35 p.m. I do consultation. I place the bone screw and take CBCT. Patient walks into my operatory. I plan it next to the patient over there. Place the implant by 2:30 to 45, and the patient is out with. A zygoma within 90 minutes. So I feel this is only possible with navigation. So I think any.